Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today I'd like to introduce you to a new branch of science called biomimetics. Now, before I go on with my wonderful speech, let me introduce you um, the roadmap to my speech so that all of you know what I'm about to talk about. Uh, first of all, I'd like to tell you the definition of biomimetics and how it was first created. And then second, I'd like to show you the real world applications of the concept. So without further delay, let me move on to my first point. Now in the design world today, the strategy called um, benchmarking is actually uh, flourishing. For those of you who do not know what benchmarking is, it is essentially imitating. Um, designers who, are struggle, um, who, have stru who struggle and have difficulty creating um, their own designs actually imitate and copy designs of other successful companies and products and use that as their own. Well, recently, scientists have decided to uh, benchmark, it, benchmark as well. Except this time, they decided to benchmark the greatest designer on Earth, and that is Mother Nature. And this makes great sense because Mother Nature has went through very um, trillions of years of experience of designing, and the theory of evolution and the theory of natural selection proves to us that the designs that they provide to, to us right now are very efficient and optimized designs. Um, so that was how, that's the idea behind, um, that, that's the idea behind biomimetics and that is how biomimetics came to place. And this guy called Otto Schemia first named the field as biomimetics in the 1950s. Now to move on to my second point, the application of the concept. There are two, I have provided for you two great examples of biomimetics and the first of them is the bug code. In 1948, this, um, according to the Wired magazine, this person called George De Mestro created the Velcro. Uh, one day he walked, uh, uh, he went on a walk with his dog, and he noticed that these burrs actually clung to the fur of his dog really tightly. So looking at that, he got the inspiration for the Velcro, which we call the Tsik And now the second example is um, self-cleaning paint. This was designed by some scientists, and what they did is that they looked at the lotus plant, and you know how lotus plants don't get wet even though they're in the water? Well, they used that mechanism and decided to create a uh, paint that doesn't get dirty even when it is exposed to the dirt. So those are the two examples that I have provided for you today. And now I'd like to, sum before I go off the podium, I'd like to summarize what I've told you. First of all, I have told you the basic definition of biomimetics and said that it was benchmarking nature. And second of all, I have given you two examples of the real world applications. Thank you.